What are isosceles trapezoids? That's what we'll be going over, as well as some of their properties, in today's Wrath of Math lesson. You may recall that, in general, trapezoids can look kind of strange. They lack a lot of the nice properties that other quadrilaterals we study have. Remember that a trapezoid is just a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And these parallel sides are called the bases of the trapezoid. In a trapezoid, none of the sides have to be equal, and none of the angles have to be equal either. Two angles of a trapezoid that are adjacent to the same base are called base angles. So this is a pair of base angles of this trapezoid, and we also have another pair of base angles up here. They are angles adjacent to the same base of the trapezoid. Then an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid that has a pair of congruent base angles. So if these two angles are congruent, then this would be an isosceles trapezoid. Now let me try drawing an isosceles trapezoid and we'll talk more about it. If you want a more general introduction to trapezoids, check out my lesson introducing them. I'll leave a link to it in the description. All right, I think this is a pretty good isosceles trapezoid. For convenience, let's label its vertices A, B, C, and D. Remember, since this is a trapezoid, it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Side AB, in this case, is parallel to side DC. And we're saying that this is an isosceles trapezoid, which means it has a pair of congruent base angles. Now you might wonder, which pair of base angles are congruent? These two down here, or these two up here? Well, it turns out it doesn't matter, because if one pair of base angles are congruent, then the other pair will be congruent as well. So let's just say that angles D and C are congruent, and we'll show why the others must be congruent too. So in this isosceles trapezoid, the base angles C and D are congruent. All right, so then the question is, why must angles A and B also be congruent? It's because, remember, in a trapezoid, if we consider two angles that are not base angles, so they're not adjacent to the same base, they will always be supplementary. So if we say the measure of angle D is X and the measure of angle A is Y, then X plus Y must be equal to 180. And if we don't want to be lazy, we might write 180 degrees to be specific. And remember, they are supplementary angles because this side, AD, is a transversal cutting the parallel sides, AB and DC. So these two angles are consecutive interior angles, thus they must be supplementary. Then we can use that same logic with angles C and B. Since angle D is congruent to angle C, angle C also has a measure of X. Then let's say that angle B has a measure of Z, and we're arguing that Y is equal to Z. Well, making the same argument we just made about a transversal cutting parallel sides, we know that angles C and B are consecutive interior angles, and so X plus Z must add to 180. So we'll write that, X plus Z equals 180 degrees. Thus, we see that X plus Y and X plus Z both equal 180 degrees. So X plus Y is equal to X plus Z, and we can subtract X from both sides to see that Y is equal to Z. Thus, as expected, the base angles A and B are congruent to each other. However, take care to note that these two angles are not congruent to these two. So angle D is congruent to angle C, and angle A is congruent to angle B, but all four of them are not congruent to each other. If they were all congruent to each other, then we would actually have a rectangle, which has two pairs of parallel sides, whereas a trapezoid has only one pair of parallel sides. So just to clean this diagram up a little bit, we'll delete that math and erase these letters. And we'll mark that angles A and B are congruent with these two curves. All right, so we see an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid that has a pair of congruent base angles. And if it has a pair of congruent base angles, then the other pair of base angles must also be congruent. Let's quickly go through a few other interesting properties of isosceles trapezoids. 
One very important property is that the legs of an isosceles trapezoid, those are the sides that aren't parallel, they are congruent. So the legs AD and BC are congruent to each other. Pretty cool. We're not going to prove any more properties in this lesson. We'll just look at a few, but we will do the proofs in later lessons. Let me know if you'd like to see those sooner rather than later. Another cool thing about isosceles trapezoids is that their diagonals are also congruent. So the diagonal AC is congruent to the diagonal BD. Another property that's very cool is not only are the diagonals congruent, but they also cut each other proportionally. So if we say these two diagonals intersect at the point P, the ratio of the segment DP to the segment PB is the same as the ratio of the segment CP to PA. We'll go ahead and write that down here. The ratio of the segment DP to PB, that's DP to PB, it's equal to the ratio of the segment CP to P. A. That's CP to PA. Notice that I've left off the segment symbols above the letters in this equality, just so it looks a little nicer. Interestingly though, the ratios don't stop there. These two ratios are also equal to the ratio of the bases, the ratio of DC to AB. If you're familiar with similar triangles, you now might notice what we're really saying is that this triangle, DPC, is similar to this triangle, BPA. I'll quickly point out, you might wonder, looking at these ratios, how do we know which segment should be in the numerator and denominator of each ratio? Well, notice in the numerators of these ratios, we've got the base DC, and then we've got the segments that intersect the base DC. Whereas in the denominator, we have the base AB and the segments that intersect the base AB. If we wanted to, we could flip them all to have the base AB and these segments that intersect it in the numerator, which would look like this. So those are just some of the properties of isosceles trapezoids. Remember that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides called the bases. Two angles that are adjacent to the same base are called the base angles. And an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose base angles are congruent as in each of the pairs of base angles are congruent. So in this case, angles D and C are congruent, and angles A and B are congruent. Super quick example of a problem you might be given with an isosceles trapezoid. Suppose we have this isosceles trapezoid, and we know that these sides are the bases. Thus, since it's an isosceles trapezoid, the legs AD and BC are congruent. And suppose we're given these expressions for the lengths of the legs AD and BC. And let's say we want to find the length of the segment AD. We could do that by setting these expressions equal to each other, solving for x, and then plugging that value into this equation. So since we know that these legs of the isosceles trapezoid are congruent, we know that 2x minus 3 equals x plus 5. 2x minus 3 equals x plus 5. Let's solve for x, so we'll just subtract x from both sides. We have that x minus 3 equals 5, add 3 to both sides, and we have that x is equal to 8. Then to find the length of the side AD, we can just plug our value for x into that equality. So we'll have that the length of AD is equal to 2 times x, which is 8, minus 3. This is equal to 16 minus 3, which is 13. Notice, of course, since AD and BC are congruent, since this is an isosceles trapezoid, we would get the same answer if we plugged x equals 8 into this equation. 8 plus 5 is also 13. And that should do it for this lesson. So I hope this video helped you understand what isosceles trapezoids are, as well as some of their interesting properties. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. I encourage you to try to prove some of the properties we mentioned in this lesson, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. Welcome back to